now comes how do you analyze the metadata of the data set as I told you so how do you see what variables are there what is the name of the variables what is the length type format location and all sorts of metadata about the data set so proc contents proc contents is very helpful in having a snapshot of the data set in one go when you are dealing with production data they contain million of records and at least 5200 variables 5200 I mean in the range of 5200 mostly I've seen data sets having variables more than 400 even so for modeling purposes we used to get data sets which had 350 plus variables and one or two million observations there is no way in this world you can manually go and check okay what are the variables and what are what is the type of data that is present in those variables so proc contents help you in accomplishing such objectives if, if you run this on a data set you use the varnum option it will show you the variables as and when they were created in the data set their type their length and so on and so forth all all kind of details will be available to you okay so just to show you the contents I'll quickly run this again okay so the output will come on the HTML tab and always keep an eye on the right side as well so if there is any error or any issue in your output okay in your output I'm not seeing in the log uh, in your code so it will throw up here so the INP underscore loss data set had 15,289 observations nine variables uh, this is all the system specific information that spits out and since there was no varnum use so it will throw up the variables alphabetically it will not sprint them out in the order in which they were encountered in the file so don't worry about these formats best 32 I'll, I'll deal with them discuss with them in detail when we cover uh, the our module 2 but right now understand that what are the basic data types that are that these fall in and what is the length of those variables okay it has it is now showing a contents snapshot of the SAS help data set that was used so as you can see there is a SAS help dot double com it is showing up how many observations how many variables if there is an index created see all the nitty-gritty details of the data set are printed out if, if it is indexed so a data set can also be indexed to optimize searching to speed up processing and it can be sorted again sorting means again uh, the searching and all will be fast so this all can be done on a data set as well so this is how the output from your SAS studio will look like okay all the data will be all the metadata about the data set will be printed out so this brings us to the logic of copying over data sets that means you're creating a data set out of a data set right so say suppose you have a data set called ab2xyz dot sas 7 b dat as I told you the data set will always have a file name extension of dot sas 7 b dat so don't uh, get worried if you see such a file and you say oh I thought it was a sas data set it is something else it is a sas data set the file name extension is dot sas 7 b dat and if you want to use it in your code anywhere you don't have to mention dot sas 7 b dat right anywhere have you seen me using this in uh, my code no because it is understood that you're referring to a dot sas 7b dat because you're using it with a data step a data statement or a set statement uh, or a out is equal to statement so the expected file type is a sas data set so if you don't give it a sas data set it will throw an error right if it was a dot txt and you said set ab2 xyz simply and that data output to get it will throw an error it will say I did not find a data set which was ABC 2 XYZ dot SAS 7 B dat so you have to be careful you have to refer the data sets by just the name of the data set without the file name extension and this is how you will create a copy of the data set and create a new data set out of it so if you simply run this piece of code okay data output to get set ABC to XYZ it will copy all the variables and all the observations from ABC to XYZ to output to get data set okay so 
the PDB will iterate over all the observations of ABC to XYZ. It will copy over all the variables, copy over all the observations, flag all the observations to be printed out because there is no observation to be deleted. I haven't mentioned it in this piece of code. So I want all the observations, all the variables to be printed out and it will do it happily. Right? So I'm creating an exact replica of the data set in a new data set. So this brings us to what is a data step. So working on non sas data sets requires either of the following. If either you have to use in file input statement within a data step to create a data set or you have to use proc import data the way I showed you uh, and terminate it with the run statement and bring it to the SAS system. But if the input data set is already a SAS data set, you just have to put in the set statement and the output can be created instantaneously. There is no other programming logic required. Simply say data output data set. So the, it should read as data output data set, not output file. I'm not creating a file out of it. I'm creating a data set out of it. So read it as data output data set, set input data set, then some logic which you want to do, do I mean create a new variable, or do something, conditional programming, anything, terminate with the run statement and notice the semicolons at the end of each statement. It is a must. The moment you miss a semicolon, it will go to a new line, interpreted as a command, throw up garbage values, throw an error and fail your code. So make it a habit, complete a statement, hit semicolon. Complete a statement, hit semicolon. So if you are trying to create a new data set out of an existing data set, simply say data output data set, set input data set, and then some logic, and then run. If you, even if you don't, don't put any logic, if you run just these three statements, it will create an exact replica of your input data set. I'll follow, I'll walk you through how the screenshot will appear in the SAS studio. So these screenshots will help you in, uh, Connecting with your own SAS Studio installations, you don't get lost as to how to navigate through that interface. That interface is not that difficult, uh, but they will help you in getting started. Once you get started, it's it's very quick, intuitive. You can follow very easily. So this you can always come back, refer to these screenshots in case you want some help as to where do I see my data sets, where do I see my work library, where do I see my results, how to navigate the folder structure and all that stuff. So you can always come back to this and follow it from here. Otherwise, it is very self-intuitive. You can follow it very easily. So what we are trying to highlight here is there is a data set called AA comp in the pre-provided directory called SAS help in SAS studio. We are setting it and we are creating a new data set. Okay. Now, my question to you is, am I creating a permanent data set or a temporary data set? It's a temporary data set. Even if I hadn't written work dot, it would have been a temporary data set. Okay. And I am trying to do some processing as well. On what? On SAS help dot double com data set. Right? So anything written after set statement will be applied to the data set which is mentioned in the set statement and written to the data set provided in data step in the data statement. You understood? So if there is uh, the, the, the data set that we are reading is AA comp, it will go and check if the locale is English. Okay. It will create a new variable called locale and uh, trim it and overwrite it. The key will be overwritten again with the trim. So trim will remove the leading trading spaces and it will be overwritten. And then it will be returned to the new data set called new. And then I'm trying to print out the values of new data set. So I can do that the same step where I'm reading the input data set. So I'm accomplishing two things here. I'm reading a data set. I'm doing some processing on the data and I'm writing it out to a new data set. So it is doable and we can do that in the same step. So don't, not two steps are required. Okay. So if you want to do some processing, make it a habit. The moment you set a state data, data set, you start uh, tweaking the variables or manipulating the variables, uh, transforming the variables, and then writing it out to a output data set. So this is how the results will look like. Uh, the spaces would be stripped off and everything will come up nice and clean. 